Welcome to the City Sports Special, and I'll be speaking to two Ghanaian athletes at the moment, record holders, uh, and making the country proud all the way in Texas. Different types or different places in Texas, of course. First up is our 100 meter record holder, held the previous record, and last weekend he broke his own record and is now ranked number one in the world in the outdoors. Ladies and gentlemen, Benjamin Azamati is my first guest, joining us from Kenyon, Texas. Ben, how are you? Everything good? I'm good. I'm doing okay. How are you, Benjamin? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. <laughs> I'm buzzing for <laughs> you, especially. <laughs> You're running incredible numbers. We'll come to you. And also from uh, Texas A&M, Deborah Aqua, the new uh, long jump queen of this country. Just like Azamati, she also held a previous record in the uh, women's long jump in this country and now she's gone several steps better now 6.89 incredible record uh, as well from Deborah Devi uh, very nice to have you join us here on the show thank you all right guys uh, this is incredible I mean uh, to have two record holders uh, from Ghana athletics at this moment in time says a lot about where our athletics has come uh, for a very for all of the times that we've, 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 we've witnessed athletics in this country and all the great athletes that have come and gone. We're witnessing the record holders currently still alive and actively participating in athletics. It's a wonderful moment. And uh, Debbie, uh, since we started with you, ladies first, I'll obviously start with you. You held the, now you hold the record for the, in, the, the, the national indoor long jump. You hold the record for uh, the outdoor as well. I mean, what is it like? Last season, you missed out on the Olympic Games by one centimeter. To be back here and competing and setting new records, how does that feel like for you? Well, you know, like it's every athlete's dream to to make it to the Olympics. So it was my dream last year to make it to the Olympics too. Uh, I we I had a series of discussions with my coach concerning you know the Olympics, and then we tried like our our best to to make it happen. You know, like I talked to my my head coach, like he was willing to do anything possible to make me go, but. For some reason, you know, I, I was shocked. So, yeah, I couldn't go. But it was all good. And yeah. I knew this year was coming. So, yeah, I was preparing for that. And you talk about this year you're coming, obviously, because you've already qualified for the World Championships. Oh, tell, yeah. me about, uh, <laughs> tell me about that new jump, 6.89. Um, I believe it's an African lead at the moment. Um, yeah. That's incredible. Tell me about the, the lead up to that. Was that something that you were expecting or that came to you yourself as a surprise, considering that you struggled to make that sort of mark for the Olympics last season? Okay, so uh, the main focus was to, to qualify. Right. I wasn't thinking of the mark, but what I wanted to, to do was to qualify. Like I had a, I talked to my coach and I was like, well, I guess there's a lot of things I need to put together so I can qualify and then he was like, so what do you think? So I was like, well, being a long jumper, uh, like it entails a lot. And one thing that I, I was kind of lacking was my technique, especially my takeoff and then, you know, uh, yeah, my takeoff and then my landing. Yeah. So what I did was I was like, coach, I think, uh, you know, whenever you're in the game, like as you, as you grow, you can you, you turn to, to understand how, how we go. So I was like, well, so I'm now kind of getting what they mean when coaches talk about putting the feet down, putting the feet down. So I kind of pictured it and I was like, oh, yeah, I think I'm doing it. And that's what that's why I think like I can do good. So going to the meet, I was like, well, I know this is what I'm supposed to be doing and I haven't been doing it. So I'm going to do it like no matter how it is. So he yeah. was like, oh, yeah, go for it. And then I tried my first jump and it was a foul. So he was like, you know what, you know, that, you know, that type of athletes who fire was in, in the track meet. So, yeah, yeah, do it. So that means you're doing a good job. So move your mark uh, back, you know, and I'm still doing it. So that was when I got to know that, yeah, if I keep doing it and I do it good and I get the ball, I was going to jump good. So it wasn't, it was a surprise, but it wasn't really a surprise yeah. when I jumped that. Incredible stuff. Very, very, very proud of you, uh, Debbie. Um, you know, for some of us that know your journey, um, that silver medal from the African Games was a big deal. I know that you were, you were, you were slightly injured for that. Mm. And then you, you obviously, you took part in the relays. That didn't go too well. But now you're back in a, in a very happy place right now. I'll come back to you in a bit. But let me go to Azamati. Um, ben, listen, man. 
Uh, I don't know what it is with that truck, but last year in exactly the same truck, you went there and you blazed your new national record. What is it about that truck and you setting records on it? I like that truck, man. I mean, um, that is the way I run my my previous personal best. So going in there, I was like, you know, um, this is where I think uh, the track is good, the weather is good. I mean, there are a lot of people in the stadium too, so I have to, you know, put on a show. And I mean, um, the indoor season had been really, really good for me. I ran a 654. So, I mean, going under 10 wouldn't be really a difficult thing for me. So I just wanted to go in there and then, you know, break my own record and um, it was able to happen. Yeah, incredible stuff. 9.90 is... Uh... You know, if it wasn't because uh, Omanyala ran that 9.77, 9.90, you were this close to the African record, which previously stood at, I think, 9.84 or something like that. Uh, so that is, well, I was within touching, touching distance for you. But um, obviously, uh, this year you started well, the same way you started last year very well. And after you ran that, that national record last season, um, you couldn't, run anywhere near that again throughout the, the rest of the season. Um, how, what have you put in place to prevent that this year? Because obviously it's a big year ahead of you and you obviously need, need much, much faster times. What did you think went wrong last season that um, prevented you from marching your, your, your times uh, from the national record that you think you can correct this season and probably continue to lower your time as you go? Um, it's, it's, a lot. I mean, um, last season, um, uh, if you'd watch my block, I mean, I had my right foot being the front leg and then my left being behind. But this time when I went to Texas Relays, I, I had changed it. So I changed everything in the fall. Even in the Olympics, I had my right leg uh, in front and all that. But this time I've changed everything. I've switched everything. I was, I'm able to, I think because of the switch and because of how strong I get, um, uh, I think I'm able. I was able to run a, a PR in the 60 meters, which is a 6.54, yeah. and then also I was able to go into Texas Relays to run a 9.90. So I think um, basically it had it had a lot to do with my stats. You know, um, the blocks really take a lot of time. Your reaction time and all that really plays a factor. But then last season wasn't really bad though. Though I was not able to run the nine again, I was getting pretty much close: 10.02, 10.04, 10.05. But then, yeah, um, this season is going to be good. Uh, I feel it coming. I feel uh, I'll be able to run the nine in a couple of events. So we will see. Yeah, we'll see. I think the nine age is coming. It's coming. It's coming. I can see it. I can feel it. Uh, <laughs> I can feel it. It has to come. Um, uh, let's talk uh, briefly about um, what the rest of this season looks like. Because every time we look at every single time that you've run, it's almost a record. It's a Division Two record everywhere. So it's almost like now you're shattering your own records. And you've got a lot of people asking, why are you still in Division Two? I mean, it's like you're much bigger than the division. Even though you might not admit, we will say it for you, that you're much bigger than that division. And I mean, what is it even for you? Like when you compete against these guys, because sometimes I know it can be difficult if you feel like, people are not matching up to you because sometimes we feel like bigger competition can actually improve your time because every time you've set a national record by the, by the ATF <laughs> meter mark, you're like so far apart from the others. I mean, how do you balance that? The fact that you're just way better than the rest and still be able to motivate yourself to keep on running lower times. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the bigger competitions make you run faster, but, uh, it's always the clock in you. I mean, I've always felt like track and field is an individual, you know, sport. So when I get there, I just think about myself and then, you know, going by my plan in the race and then also, you know, having to run a good time or a qualification mark. So I feel, I mean, I'm in Division 2, all right. But then when I run fast, everybody in the country gets to know of it. So it's about where you feel comfortable. It's about the relationship you have, you have with your coach. My coach is someone who sees me beyond, you know, my athletic career. He wants me to do well academically too. I have other other goals I want to achieve aside track and field, you understand? And then he's someone who is going to help me to achieve it. So it's not just about the track for me, but the relationship I have with my coach. And then also, the, I think the division doesn't really matter to me because um, in the outdoor season, before um, conference or NTA, we are able to run with the D1s. And then when I when I run with the D ones, I I show up of course. Even in Texas relays, I was able to you know show up. But then um, I feel this season is really really going to be great for me. 
Yeah, I, I see it too. Uh, you know, and even like, and you rightly put it. Even if you even though you're running in Division Two, in the entire country in collegiate sport, you rank like number four in terms of fastest time. That is, that is ridiculous. That is absolutely incredible. Um, let me go back to Jessica. Uh, sorry, Deborah. Now I don't know what, where I'm getting the Jessica from, <laughs> but Debbie will kill me. <laughs> uh, Debbie. Um, Last year, like you rightly said, wasn't uh, great for you in terms of not going to the Olympics. But on a personal level, the times were really great. Uh, sorry, the distances were really great. You had some really good, uh, good jumps. Um, this year, though, there's a lot of competitions ahead. There's the World Championship, which you've already qualified for now. Uh, there's the African Championships in Mauritius. There's the NCAA, uh, the NCAA Championships as well. What are your goals for this season, personally? So, yeah, my goals are to, to make it to all of them. And if, uh, even if I don't get to go, then that, it might depend on what my coaches think, you know. Um, I have a whole lot of things going on to, you know, to fix. I had a uh, lower back fracture from, you know, somewhere 2018, which still bothers me. And, it's still, and it's, it depends on how I take off, you know. But right now it's sore and... Um, they're still our trainers are still taking care of it, so I'll be good, and I think I'll I'll I'll, I'll be I'll be there. I'll make it to all of them. Yeah, and and and, and it's a big deal, uh, Oregon, for a lot of for, for a lot of us because, you know, that is a. That is, we've not won a world championship medal for Ghana athletics since 2005. It's been a very, very long time indeed. <laughs> you know, even you are surprised. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's been that long. So we need you guys to show up there and actually deliver. But let's look at what kind of support you need because uh, at the end of the college season, uh, which ends somewhere in June, I believe, mid, uh, early the first two weeks of June, the world championship is in the last. No, it's, it's in it's in a month's time after that. When the collegiate season is over, what kind of support do you need to be able to stay fit so that when you get to the World Championship, you're able to, you're able to compete? Okay, so what I would say right now is, I don't know about Azamati, but this is my, my last year in the NCA, And, you know, after school, like, the university is done with you. You're like, I'm not, I'm not going to be on any scholarship. I remember I've been telling people that, I guess I'll have to quit after school to look for something to do, you know, because I will not be in any scholarship and I can't depend on what I have right now, you know. Yeah, so if I can get any any kind any form of support from anybody, like I don't mind if I if I get the support and I'll still I'll still be training for it. But if not, then I don't know how I'm gonna make it. Wow. But any form of support from anywhere, I'm still in. But if not, then you know, yeah, because I can't be working and then be practicing at the same time. It's it's not, you know. It's really hard. Yeah, so what you're basically telling me right now is at the end of this season, if you don't continue to get support from elsewhere, you might just be done with athletics. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is quite, a, that's quite unfortunate. And as Amati is listening, um, as I, I, I don't know, I mean, that must be hard for you to listen to because, and I know that you, you spoke about the fact that your coach is preparing you for life even beyond athletics. This is exactly what Deborah is speaking about, right? Because a lot of you are running really good times, you're jumping really good distances, but the uncertainty about the kind of support you could get is making you doubt whether you actually have a future in the sport. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, looking at um, um, Debbie's jump, 689, if he was an American and in school, he could quit school to, you know, to go pro because that is his country. But this is a situation we find ourselves to be internationals. You can't quit. When you quit, you're going to go back home. So you have to continue jumping and all that. And this is, it raised the question that after after school, what, what does she have to do? You understand? This is where the government needs to come in to support her. I mean, my monthly stipends and all that, you know, to fund her going out of the States to, you know, go compete and also be in shape to be able to compete for the, for the country. So um, it's, it's sometimes sad. I mean, looking at the, at the before Olympic Games, I mean, after our NCAA, we got no competition to be entered in. We went into without shape and all that, without being in race shape. So um, I feel like these are the things that need to be, you know, looked at and then need to be done for the athletes to be able to, you know, do well in the, on the big stages for the country. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you 100%. And for you personally, when you're running 
9.90, that is the mark of pro. So it's not just, just you know, it's not just, uh, you know, Debbie's jumps. That. I don't know what's with me and Jessica today. <laughs> it's not just, uh, it's not just Deborah's jumps that are pro numbers. Your times are pro numbers as well. And you and I have spoken an awful lot about um, the idea of possibly going pro at some point. A, a good example I can give is Divino Duduru of Nigeria. He was, he was running some incredible 100 meter and 200 meter times. He decided to quit school and go pro. Um, have you had contact with people um, probably offering or the, with the potential of offering uh, contracts for you and the idea of going pro? Is that something that's been discussed with you, your coach? Have you had any contacts with anybody? Um, I mean, I think... Uh... Yeah, I mean, even last year, I mean, I had people, you know, approaching me, you know, I mean, agent, you know, wanting to, you know, sign you and then, you know, um, if possible, find, you know, contracts for you and all that. But um, I think with last season, you know, I had two more years in school. Um, so, um, you know, I had to, you know, get my degree. I'm not an American, so I have to, you know, get my degree in, um, in school. And then also to see how that goes after school. So, um, I mean, um, this season, I'm really, I'm running pretty fast. We're going to see how that is you know, going to be if I'm going to go pro or not. But we'll see. It depends on how I'm going to run the rest of the season. Yeah. And uh, let me stick with you for the rest of the season. There are three big competitions. Okay, four big competitions for you. There's the NCAA uh, Championship. There's Mauritius, the African Championship. There's the World Championship. And then there is the Commonwealth Games. Are all these four... I know that the NCAA is non-negotiable, but are the rest of the competitions all... A must for you, or you're gonna pick and choose. Um, it depends on um, how I feel, how my body feels. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously the, I think the world champs is first, or the African champs. I don't know. Um, yeah, the African but, uh, champs is first, then the world yeah, champs, yeah. then the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, that would be a tough decision for me, but uh, I would I would have to listen to what my coach has to say. It depends on me being ready or not. Um, so. It doesn't solely depend on me, but also it depends on what my coach also has to say. And I believe whatever that he has to tell me would be the best for me. So I would have to listen to him and then we go by that. Yeah. And, and uh, when you talk about the World Championship, I, I'm sure you heard me mention to, to Deborah there that we haven't won the medal there since 2005. Uh, and that was a, that was a medal uh, in the heptathlon even. So the individual events, uh, the single events, we've not won a medal um, I don't remember if we ever won any at all. Um, is that something that plays in your mind? You, you want to change that, obviously? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's every athlete's dream to, you know, win laurels for um, his country. So, I mean, I can't go into the World Championship thinking I'm just going there to compete, you know, obviously. I mean, with what happened in Tokyo, I know um, anything at all is possible. You know, um, Jacobs came in as an underdog and was able to, you know, win something for his country. And did that in the four and the hundred and the four by hundred. So I mean, anything at all is possible. I mean, um, it, I can go in there being a nobody and then come out to be someone with the with a medal for my country. So I mean, I look forward to it. I'm gonna go there and then you know be a competitor. I mean, do the best of my ability and then see if I can come out with a medal for my country. Uh, yeah, and um, one more for you in terms of records. Obviously, now you have the hundred meter record. Uh, have you got an eye on Joe's record as well? Joe doesn't seem very happy that you're coming after his record so soon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm going to run the 200 I mean, this weekend. Uh, we're going to see how it's going to be. But um, I feel good about it. I think I can run pretty well and also qualify for the World, World Championship in the 200 too. This time I want to do the 100 and the 200 at the World Champ. So. I'm looking forward to qualifying. If I'm able to run and break the record, that's cool. But then I am, I'm actually looking at, you know, running the qualification time. Yeah, incredible. Uh, hang in there for me. Let me go to uh, Deborah now. Deb, uh, Debbie, I mean, when you break the record indoor, outdoor, you hold all of the records. What's really the motivation to keep competing? Well, for you, it's not just about the records. It's about what, what kind of mark you can leave at the global stage. Oh, yeah. So, um... Like I keep saying, like we get we get I my school motivates me, like the coaches, my athlete, like my colleague athletes, you know, and then friends from back home. I get I get motivation from, you know, different uh angles. So yeah, that keeps me yeah, that keeps me moving. And even talking about quitting and stuff like that, I have people talk to me like, 
or you can be talking to your coaches. I know they, they, they'll, they'll be able to help and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah, I went to coach my, my head coach, talk to him about, you know, life after school. And then he was like, oh, yeah, I know I know one or two people in your country are doing good. And if possible, that's what he told me last year. And then I went to him this year to talk to him to, I think, somewhere two months ago. And he was like, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember you told me uh, last year that uh, if you get to see like one, two or three people from my country doing good, like he's going to help us get a contract, like a shoot contract or something like that. So he was like, oh yeah, if you keep pushing harder, then he's going to do it. So yeah, that's also a sort of motivation to me too. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about the what about the world championship? Obviously, you've never competed at the world championship before. Uh, this would be your first time. Uh, all things being equal, of course, you show up there in Oregon and Oregon is basically the world capital of athletics. Uh, tell me about the feeling just thinking about that, thinking about the fact that you'll be competing at your first world championships ever. Well, that kind of scares me a little bit because I haven't been on a bigger, bigger stage before. <laughs> you know, the NCAA championship, are, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of big, though, because there are a lot of good athletes that are going to go there to yeah. compete as well. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a bigger stage and it scares me, like I said. But I think, I think I'll be good. Like, you know, <laughs> I'll get there. Yeah. I watch, uh, I watch the Mati compete in the Olympics and then how she, uh, he kind of felt, you know. Yeah, being his first time doing it. So I know yeah. my first time reason I might find myself in that situation before. And I've also competed in Oregon before. I know how the track is and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, I'll work on that. Yeah, okay. Um, one, uh, one last question for you, Deborah. Um, obviously now uh, that you're, you're finishing school, this is your last year in, in, even in competing in the collegiate system, uh, of course. Um, going forward, uh, this year in particular, also with the African Championships in place, with the Commonwealth Games in place, what would you consider to be the ideal way for you to buy out of collegiate sport? Ooh. Well, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. Maybe win just, all three competitions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just, I just need to ask questions, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll find a way out, it will work, you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you hang in there. As I, let me come back to you uh, for, for your last badge of questions. Um, now, um, one of the biggest things that everybody talks about in this country is uh, the, the, the quartet of you, Joe, uh, Sean, um, and whether it's Menu or it's uh, Enchi or whoever is... Uh, he's been drafted in, uh, whether it's Emmanuel as well. Um, and the records you guys are setting, last year alone, you guys run two, uh, you, you guys broke the national record, obviously, um, in, the, in, in the relays. Since then, since the Olympics, since that final, have you guys, do, are you guys, do you have like a WhatsApp group where you're constantly talking about what's happening? Because it's almost as if we don't hear about you guys anymore. <laughs> I mean, we hear from each other all the time. I mean, even um, I think last two days, me, Joe, uh, Yimano, um, Joseph Menu, and then some other Ghanaians were on FaceTime, you know, talking. So, I mean, we are always in touch. Anytime I run, I mean, Joe calls me. Um, when um, Yimano ran um, 10 to 6 and 20.89, to the, um, I think last weekend, I mean, we called, her, we called him together with even Deborah to, you know, talk about it and all that. So, I mean, we are always in touch. I mean, um, you guys will obviously don't know, but then we are always in touch. Um, we are we are that kind of you know we have a strong bond. So yeah, yeah, and that's good because that's what we want to hear. Because um, you guys have also qualified for the world championships in in the relays, and that's going to be a big deal. After what you did in the Olympics, the expectations are obviously really really high. But do you feel, apart from the individual level, but do you feel that collectively from the GAA to government? Do you get the sense that you guys are getting the support that you think you deserve, especially after running a national record and going to the Olympics final? Um, I mean, um, last year, I mean, when we voiced out, we were able to get a campaign. I don't know how this year is going to be like, but then um, um, when you watch Italy, they've already, I think they've already put a team in place to go run in a competition that is coming up. But I don't know what we're doing, though. But um, I think um, one of the guys... Uh, came up with a, a suggestion that we have to, you know, go to pen relays to go around and all that. But it all has to, you know, come with um, funding and all that to be able to get the athletes to wherever that we want to go around. 
But then, um, yeah, I mean, the the I feel like the association also have to make good use of uh, of the times that when we run fast. I mean, looking at the Olympics, um, we're able to get into the final. I mean, it's something that they can capitalize on and, and you know get sponsorship out of it. I mean, we are we are doing well, and of course, the, the country is noticing. So you can go seek, seek sponsorship for the relay team and all that. But I feel like um, it's something that is not being done um and i think if if it's done i think it's really going to change and it's really going to help us you know get into a, a lot of competitions before even the major ones you know come up okay i mean that, that yeah that's brilliantly put uh here's my last question for you same question i asked deborah obviously this is not your last year in college sport but this is a season the outdoor season is it's already started what would you consider a good end to the season with all of the competitions that are uh, that are in place for this year how would you ideally want to end all of those competitions? I mean, I um, I look at getting medals in every every of the competitions that I go to. So if it happens in the World Champs, cool. If it happens in the African Champs, cool. And if it happens in the Commonwealth Games, that's okay. I definitely want to, you know, end the season with a medal. Fantastic. Brilliant. All right, Aza, I know you've, you've got class and everything, so thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, it's been, it's been lovely. Uh, Deborah as well, not Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, thank Sorry, you. Guys. And uh, all the best to the two of you. Obviously, we are in touch. So uh, uh, we'll, keep, we'll, keep, we'll keep talking. And uh, hopefully uh, our, um, this season is, is a massive for you. For us. You're definitely going to have to drop into that 9.8 zone. It's happening. It's going to happen. It's going to okay. happen. <laughs> And uh, and Davey is getting closer to uh, getting closer to seven. That would be some ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I should get there. I should is get there by the end of the season. Though. You should get there by the end of the season. Seven point zero. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, uh, all the best. Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk. Uh, we'll talk on WhatsApp. Thank you very much. Right. Thank, you. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much, Benjamin Azamati, and. Uh, of course, Deborah Aqua speaking to me from their base in Texas, USA. This has been another City Sports Special. My name is Fentio Tahir Fentio. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.